Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kao Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. When Jesus said it is finished on that cross, meant his earthly ministry had finished. Meant outside of salvation, your healing, your breakthroughs is sorted out. Now the next thing we're going to deal with now is your salvation. But your healing, your breakthrough, your finances, your everything, it is finished. It has come to a conclusion. It's over. I remember at different times they tried to stone him. He would just walk away from their midst. They couldn't because he said, my father gave me this command. I have power to lay down my life. I have power to take it up. Since I have not laid it down, no man can take it from me. Praise the Lord. So, until he was arrested, so what happened? They didn't really kill him. They committed manslaughter because he laid down his life for them to take it. He gave it to them voluntarily. They didn't take it by force. It was voluntary because he said, I lay down. If I don't lay down, you cannot take it. So, just on that cross, just before he died, Jesus has always boasted in one thing, my father is with me. My father is with me. And because I do those things that please him, his father has not left me. But he cried and said, Eli, Eli, labasabakatani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken? That means the father left him. Why did the father leave him? Romans chapter 5. And 2 Corinthians, sorry, we can't go through many scriptures. Romans 5, 12 to 21 says the sins of the entire world was put upon him. If the sins of the entire world was put upon him, then it's glaring he died a sinner. He didn't die righteous. He died a sinner. We just look at one or two points. He just enlightened. As I'm sharing this grace, it's a grace and peace. Be multiplied according to what? The knowledge of God. Not according to knowledge of tithes, no. According to the knowledge of God. Let's increase grace. Praise God. And peace. Praise God. With the knowledge of God. You know, really, if you walk with God, nobody needs to teach you about giving. It will be natural. Praise Jesus. You know, one of the things the Lord spoke to me, he said, I didn't send any of the people that went to correct tithes. I didn't send them to do it. Because if I had sent them, I would have given them the solution. He said, the solution is not to tell them pay or don't pay. The solution is to teach them to be led. Say, if you are led, you will know where to give. You know where not to give. You want to give. I wanted to give. The Holy Spirit said, don't give. Here. Don't give here. Then he said, give here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, on that cross in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, and Romans, 12, Romans 5, 12 to 21, but we look at 2 Corinthians 5, 21. He says that, for he had made him to become sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So, it's not blasphemy. Jesus died with all the sins of the world on his head. And that's why the father, who couldn't stand sin, left him. And from eternity to that day, he had never experienced a separation from the father. So he screamed, saying, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me for the first time? He was without the Father and without the Holy Spirit. He was alone. It never happened from eternity. He never experienced it. And the reason why the sin was put on him is that so that he could die. Without that sin, he cannot die. So they needed him to die for your sakes. So they put the sin on him. It's called the law of substitution reaction. The occult understand it better. If they foresee death to a person, they will tell him to bring an unblemished ram or a black goat. They will cut it and then spill the blood and say, that goat has taken the place of his life, which was what happened in Egypt. No prayer could stop the angel of death. Another life had to stop it. 
So when the angel of death went round the Egypt and to the side of the children of Israel and saw blood and he said, somebody has already died, so he left. If an Egyptian put blood on his post, he wouldn't die because the angel of death doesn't know. Once he sees blood, whether ram or whatever, he'll just say somebody has died and he left. So they had to put that sin on him so that he died in our place. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to look at one or two things that happened immediately after he died. Now the Bible says that... Um, when he died, he went straight to hellfire. He couldn't go to heaven. Now, um, <laughs> Ephesians 4, verse 8 to 10. Say that, Ephesians 4, 8 to 10. Praise the Lord. Yes, Wherefore he said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now he that ascended, what is it? But he that also descended first into where? The lower parts of the earth. What is in the lower parts of the earth? That's hell. So he descended into the lower parts of the earth. Jesus went to hell. That sounds blasphemous. But he went to hell. And he was in torment. But fortunately, he didn't spend much in hell. Probably an hour. Say, so how did I know? He told the thief at his right hand, Today, not tomorrow, thou shalt be with me where? in paradise and he died in the evening he died in the evening that's why when they were checking the, you know the next day was a sabbath and no death must be on the cross by the sabbath so they were taking a hammer to break the legs of the two thieves why did they do that the weight of their legs will not be supported by the cross to drop so that the weight will be on their hands so it will make their heart burst so once that weight drops it will squeeze the heart with pressure, it will just burst so that they will die. But when they go to Jesus, the Bible says nothing shall break his bones. Yeah. The father was already dead, so they didn't break it because of the spear that caused him to lose a lot of blood. So he had died. Praise God. Hallelujah. So hell is in the lower parts of the earth. And to go to hell, I told you one time, people don't understand. Everybody, whether they go to heaven or hell, everybody first goes up. The Bible says he first what? Ascended. So when someone dies, their spirit and their soul first leaves the earth and it goes up. Now on top of the earth are spiral tubes. They are spinning like this. They are spinning. Inside it is dark, smelling like sulfur. So when a man dies, if a Christian dies, you see him going to heaven. The, the one that is not a Christian goes like this. When they get to the tubes, he now begins to descend. That's why the Bible says he first ascended, then what? Descended. So the way to hell is first up, then down. We're looking at the scripture. I'm not bringing up anything. Praise Jesus. Yeah. In Proverbs 15, 24, it says, Hell is beneath. Isaiah 14, 15, Hell is beneath the earth. The Bible calls it the belly of the earth. Acts 2, 25 to 27. Hell is beneath the belly of the earth. So when they say he went to the belly of the earth, it could still be argued that he went to paradise. No, he went to hell. Praise God. Praise Jesus. In hell, in Psalm 22, from verse 1, it says he was attacked by dogs. You know, I hear those who went to hell, they say pastors are one of the post people punished most that, that go to hell. Pastor is not to go to hell. But the pastors that do what, maybe, I don't know, whatever, fake and stuff, that go to hell, Satan punishes them more because so you are the one preaching, disturbing me. I didn't let me walk. Today, you and I will not work. So the Bible says in hell, all the demons swarmed on him. In Psalm 22, he said, I'm surrounded by dogs. So they surrounded him and swarmed all over him to do what? To torture him. In Hebrews 1, from verse 1 to 6, the Bible says, when that happened, Jesus got reborn in hell. He got born again. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. There's no blasphemy here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I read from verse 1 to 6. God, who at different times and diverse manners, spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, as in this life they have spoken to us by his son, 
whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom he also emit the world. And then verse 3, verse 6, and again, sorry, verse 5, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, you are my son, this day have I begotten thee. Now, in the first spiritual operation of the Lord, he wasn't born on a day. He existed eternally with the Father. The Bible says of the king of Salem, who has what no beginning and no end, that's Melchizedek, no time, no beginning, no end, no father, no mother. So when he says you are begotten again today, he is not talking of eternity because Jesus existed with the Father and the Son from eternity. Now in hell is a sinner. So he is now born by the command of the Father when he says, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Before he said that, he said in verse 8, he said, Thy throne, O God. So that in his being begotten, he will not just become man, he will become God. So he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. You have loved righteousness. You have hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, has that was spoken to Jesus in hell, from heaven, by the Father. Kenneth Hagin said when he died on his way to hell, he was going to hell. You know, he, he wasn't a Christian. He just went to church. He said, I've been baptized. He said, oh God, I've been baptized. Why am I going to hell? He said, I'm about to enter hell. He heard the voice of Jesus from heaven. He said, he spoke in tongues. The hell shook like a leaf. He said, something sucked him out of hell, back into his body. He would have been lost. He said, he died the second time on the way to hell. Jesus spoke from heaven. God speaks from heaven. A guy said, I was once with Satan. We were in the belly of the earth holding a meeting. And he said, I'm God. And he heard the voice of God from heaven. He said, I am God and there is God. He said, the whole place shook. He said, over 300 ages died. He said, something exploded. He said, Satan collapsed. That was the end of that meeting. God speaks from heaven. Praise God. He speaks from heaven. So he spoke from heaven over Jesus. And it mustn't have been, it wasn't up to three hours because he died in the evening, probably six. And he couldn't cross till 12 in hell because he said, today we move, we'll be in paradise. So he moved to paradise the same day he died in the night. Praise God. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. Praise God. So he said again, he said, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, let all the angels of God worship him. In verse, in verse 5, he says, for this day have I begotten thee. There was no day in eternity God begot him. They existed from eternity. You can't say this is the day Jesus was born. No, never. It was eternity. It was when he died as a sinner, he was reborn as God and man together. And that's why he could resurrect as God. So in hell, he had flesh Celestial body, you can't explain it. I can't explain it, sorry. <laughs> I can't explain that. It's not written, so I'll just leave that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you bored? <laughs> so in hell, he got born again. That's why they call it the first begotten amongst many. So he bound Satan. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.8, he led captivity captive. So all the demons that swarmed on him, he chained all of them. You must remember, while this is going on, all the saints in paradise are seeing what is going on. Why? In Luke 15, when the rich man went to hell, he saw Abraham, and Abraham saw him, and they can hear the conversation because he spoke to Abraham from hell. He said, send Lazarus to dip his finger, to touch his finger on my, on my tongue. So, in hell and paradise, they can hear their conversations and they can see what is going on. They can see the people tormented. They can see the people enjoying. So, everyone, paradise was spellbound because John the Baptist had told them, that is the lamb I'm talking about. Because when he went to paradise, he had gone preaching. Praise God. When I get to heaven, I'll still be preaching. 
Praise Jesus. You know, there are so many people that don't know faith. They fast and pray, they don't know faith. And they still can't please God. Because it's only faith that pleases God. So when we get to heaven, there will be universities, there will be secondary schools, there will be primary schools. Most Christians will have to be in crash <laughs> after 30 years of Christianity. So we will teach them. We'll be preaching the word. Preaching the word. Somebody, Jesse Duplan said, when I got to heaven, I saw Paul. He was preaching the word. Why did I know again? Jesus said, wherever the gospel is preached, and the gospel is eternal, what she has said should be spoken as a memorial. So we'll still be preaching the word in heaven. Praise God. But there'll be no binding of Satan. it will just be talking about the knowledge of God. Praise Jesus. Amen. Amen. So he bound Satan, Ephesians 4, 8, and chained him, put his head, leg on his head, and made him to bow, to conform to what every human being is still going to do later on. Every knee should bow. Every tongue must confess. Say, Satan, now say, I am Lord. Satan said, Jesus, you are Lord. Say, good. And the whole of paradise was watching. What do you think was going on? I can tell you, David was hailing. Abraham was watching. Jacob was jumping. Say, yeah! They don't change when they go into eternity. No. The rich man didn't change. He was arrogant in hell. He said, send Lazarus. That's arrogance. If you're arrogant, you'll be arrogant in eternity. You won't change. It doesn't change. Praise God. If you're shy, you'll be shy in eternity. Those of you who are shy, you can't sing. When you get to heaven, you'll be able to sing. You'll be shy. They say, the Lord Jesus says you sing. Say, I'm shy. They say, quarantine him to crash. Let him learn the word that in Christ Jesus, there is no shyness. Hmm. Praise God. Amen. So the way Sainka was doing, don't be surprised when they say, praise Jesus, Sainka, come and worship. She's just like this, you know, praise God. <laughs> She's not going to change. She's not going to be like this. No, no, no. It's the same way she is now. It's the same way she will be. Praise God. Hallelujah. Those of you are stingy, you'll be very stingy in heaven. <laughs> very stingy. It won't change. The only thing that changes a human being, 2 Corinthians 2.18, the word. To change, they have to take you to the classroom and teach you the word. Then you will change. You won't change because you're in the spirit realm. No. If you are an area boy, you'll be an area boy in heaven. Say, Daddy, Kilo, Shelembe. Babatalon, Sorombe. That's how you'll be talking. In order not to defile heaven, they quarantine you to pre crash. Praise God. So, each person was exhibiting his nature in paradise. I believe Solomon made paradise. Solomon said, oh, I need to write a poem about this. In the beauty of the darkness, the light shone in the mornings. And my beloved came out of darkness. And honey came out of vinegar. That's what Solomon will be doing in paradise. Praise Jesus. You all know how he crossed into paradise. You know, the rich man, they told the rich man, he said, the rich man told him, he said, send Lazarus. He said, those who are here cannot cross, that's Luke 15, to those who are there. For there's a great gulf and eternal gates that no one can cross. Neither can someone cross from hell to paradise, nor from paradise to hell. And that's what Psalm 24 recounts. When Jesus conquered Satan and the demons. He said, now nah, I need to move to paradise. So he got to that gulf that no being ever crossed. Not even Satan could cross it. But I'm sure if he could cross it, he would go and take some leverage in heaven. He would in paradise. He couldn't. Nothing could cross it. And he addressed the gates. So lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Enough of the pain. Say, so let the king of glory come in. Let the what we've been waiting for, let it come. Amen. And I guess that's a message also. Amen. And the gate replied, "Ah, uh ah, -uh. who are you to even dare ask me to open? Say, I'm the Lord of hosts, Lord of warriors. Say, never. Say, I've never opened, will never. He said, open all ye gates. 
He, everlast, he called the everlasting doors. So they don't open. Say, open! And the king of glory shall come in. And the gate asks the second time, who is a, eh? Who is Inka? That I should open this treasure I've kept from eternity that we have been enjoying. You don't say I can't enjoy it again. I should release it to her. Who is she? It's a lot of glory. King of kings. So open. Guess what? It opened. And it has opened. It has opened. For someone, it has opened. Hmm. Right, right, I said it. It has opened. It has opened. It never opened. But it has opened. It never opened before. But it has what? Opened. Then he crossed into paradise. Who introduced him to every other person? Of course, John the Baptist. That's the foreigner. You're a foreigner here, you're a foreigner in heaven. You're a minister here, you're a minister in heaven. I say, Daddy Abraham, you know, he observed protocol. Isaac and Jacob, not Jacob, Israel, please. Oh, Israel, thank you. Israel and Joseph, Moses, and all of them. So I bring to you the Son of God, the King of glory, the King of kings, the Redeemer, the conqueror of death, the conqueror of hell. This is Jesus, the only begotten Son of God. And Abraham said, I remember you. We met from the battle of Keldus, Demania. You were the priest I gave tithes to. You gave me, I remember your face. You gave me bread and wine. No wonder you blessed me with the name Adona. Owner of heaven and of earth. You must be the owner. I say, I am the owner. I own everything. Everything was made for me, by me. He said, Abraham, I gave you this bosom. It's mine. I gave it to you. It's part of your inheritance in me. And Abraham bowed. said, my Lord and my God. And he got born again right there. And Jacob, I said, you are the only one born again. He said, my Lord. I'm, David said, I'm already buying before we started. He said, and everybody started getting born again. <laughs> Jesus. Praise God. What did he do for three days? He was telling them, he said, my flesh, the same thing he was preaching, that's what he was telling them in hell. Because those ones in here, in paradise, sorry. He said, my flesh is meat indeed. My blood is drink. He said, give us the blood. He said, ah, it's drained out. But when we get up, you drink plenty of it. Okay, thank you. You mean we're going out? Oh, we're going. We've been here for 4,000 years. It's boring. Oh, where we're going, where I'm taking you to. you find many streets. you find streets of gold. you find flowers of diverse colors of gold. Fragrances. You'll meet my father. You mean we'll meet the divine, the father. Yes, you'll meet my father. The blessed potentate. I will take you to him. I will introduce you to him as my brother. And he will receive you. So you mean we're living here very soon? How long are we staying? John the said, I heard him preach. That the son of man, Jonah, where are you? He said, leave me alone, no. He said, I was three days in the belly of the fish. He said, that you are the sample of what it It's three days. It's one day now. And then two and third day will be out of here. I said, praise God. Praise Jesus. So what was he doing in paradise? He was preaching the gospel. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he die, will yet live forever. He said, um, my flesh is meat. He that eat my flesh shall not die, but live. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave. He was just preaching the gospel, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. He was preaching Acts, Colossians, and all that. He wasn't preaching, he wasn't preaching um, um, possess your possession. No, he was just talking about himself, gospel. Praise Jesus. After three days and three nights, he called all of them, said, we're getting, I said, nobody ever got out of here. He said, we're going out with resurrection power. He said, to flow from me into your bodies, you shall change. And I don't know how they did it. I don't know how they did it. In the kingdom of darkness, when they want to exhibit changes like that, they keep you in containers for like seven days, enchanting, giving you special drinks. You can't eat special fruits, put in native chalk, and then begin to enchant. So I guess must have been pronouncing statements upon them, and they all just maybe just closed their eyes and found themselves on the surface of the earth. So his ministry didn't end on the cross. 
Neither did he hell end under the earth. But we're not looking at his ministry in the heavens. That's his high priestly rule. We just want you to know that he's a conqueror of death. Hallelujah. He's a conqueror of hell. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the resurrection, death will give up his dead. He went into death. That's why they say, oh, death, oh, grave, where's your sting? And hell will give up its dead. He went into hell and came out. Nobody has gone to hell and come out. He's a resurrection. The resurrected and the resurrector. He is the only acclaimed from the divine that has gotten up from the grave. All other so called acclaimed, their bones are still rotting in the grave. I believe you have been blessed by that message, and I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.